Okay, checking out some IMO collection, indigenous microorganisms. Uh, this is one of the old Korean natural farming tricks in which you put rice in a box and uh, let stuff grow on it. You can see there's a lot of uh, hyphae, where the sort of hairs that form. And this is what the soil looks like. This is uh, covered by some a mound of just, you know, whatever, organic matter piled on top of some landscape fabric. Anyway, uh, uh, just pulled the box up. You can see there's some stuff left behind, but uh, generally the hyphal growth is getting through the soil like that, so it looks quite good. Good soil structure, as you can see. Let's brush off some of the soil and see if we get some of the good white stuff. And you see there. That's what you're looking for. I personally don't mind if there's some soil kind of left on. Uh, that just what turns into the kind of mud, which is at the end of the day, what you want when you pack it down with sugar. So no big deal there. Again, nice, lots of white. That's good. Pull this out. The dirt is basically stuck to it. To me, that's no problem. It is IMO. I think I had this out for about two days. It's in the middle of August here in 6B, Kentucky. So, good, nice white chunks. And you can see it growing into the soil there. So, that's a good sign. Again, you may see other videos of how to do this um, with people being a little bit more maybe strict about how much of the dirt they remove. Um, take this, right? This is good white fungus right here. Wow, look at all that. Quite nice. Very good, very good. Pull this out of the box. Uh, what, people get real specific about what kind of box you're supposed to use. Um, not me. Granted, uh, your results may vary. A lot of people are really focused also on keeping animals out. Which is, uh, if that's a problem for you, devise your method accordingly. Good IMO collection. Again, for me, intuitively, what I'm looking for is lots of just white hairs, a nice white bloom. I'd say you are. The goal is to not leave too much. Uh, you don't want it to spore out, sporulate too much. That's a pretty successful collection there. I might do sort of a secondary thing with this later. But I just used a cardboard box. Um, you don't want something super airtight. Apparently it should be a little breathable, so you might want to poke a few holes in it. But I managed to get a pretty good one out of this. Your mileage may vary, I would say. Don't worry, if you go down the KNF rabbit hole, some people are really specific and kind of dogmatic about what your collect IMO should look like, what, etc. And me, that's just not that's just not my style. Um, I'm sort of about, you know, generality and this generally looks pretty good to me. You want 
white, a white bloom in your rice. So this is just cooked rice that I put out. Now I'm gonna pack this in sugar equal weight. Okay. Okay, so we got this coming in at 135 grams. They say to use glass. So I'm gonna put equal amount of sugar in with that and start a new jar as well. So I've got some more here. Again, just kind of want to show you how good this can look. Look at all those hairs growing into the soil. Hairs growing into the rice. Real good piece right here. Uh, let me see if I can break this open. One hand just to show you. Now it looks like in the middle. Just want a lot of nice white, a nice white cake to have settled on your rice grains. Okay, so I'm gonna add the sugar. I hit the tear button. something as close to unrefined sugar as possible. Your mileage will vary depending on what you use, but you just want something that has the full spectrum of nutrients. Something as close to uh, evaporated sweet plant sap as possible. Okay, that's about the right amount. Now I'll mash it all up. Now I'm going to do the same with this batch here. Now for the fun part, you just kind of mix it all together with your fingers. Or, you know, use a spoon. Probably doesn't matter. Okay, there it is. Kind of a sugary mud paste and you can just kind of cap that up and keep it out keep it out of the sunlight since this is uh, fungal fungal matter that you're, you're trying to preserve uh, you want to keep sunlight off of it and keep it in a at least room temperature uh, or even colder I know some people put it in their fridge but I don't, I just keep mine in my shed. All right, here it is, a uh, finished batch of, I think they call this IMO2. I always forget what the numbers are. Uh, anyway, Korean Natural Farming. Uh, there's some cool stuff there. I think it is like any other, uh, you know, prescriptive system where there's a sort of definite set of rules like this, uh, people do kind of get dogmatic about, it, dogmatic about it in a way that maybe is counterproductive too. Sorry, let me focus there. Anyway, uh, I just did this one with Sukhanat, which is, uh, I went to the, you know, local health food store to get a bag of sugar in the raw or something like it, and they had this. Uh, anyway, what's cool about it is that it has, seems to have way more uh, surface area. You can see it's these kind of fine bits like that. So uh, this made for a very dry batch here. I did it, I, it was mostly uh, sugar in the raw, but there's, I would say the remaining third of it is, uh, was done with Sukuna and it's real, real dry looking. Uh, anyway, so the drier the better, I think, is what you want with this in terms of keeping it preserved. Uh, let me show you the, the other batch that I've got here. Uh, here you can see it's a little wet on the wet side. Uh, and that could be, you know, because of just how much sugar I put in. Uh, the scale kind of stopped working. I think I was over the limit of what it was, uh, what it's allowed to, uh, 
way, and so it just kind of stopped after a certain point. But anyway, um, that's another version of it here. You can kind of see the rice, right? And if the rice is, you know, the rice should still be intact, I think. Although it'll basically sort of start to liquefy itself. Uh, similar to uh, koji, if you've, if you've ever worked with koji, which is sort of becoming popular in American cuisine recently, um, in terms of fermented food in particular. Anyway, uh, but what they do, koji, I mean, I think koji and IMO are probably basically the same thing. This is my take on it anyway. What it looks like is that's the case. Um, what was I going to say about that? Yeah, koji. Anyway, yeah, so koji is what you use to make soy sauce and miso, and it's a it's a domesticated fungus uh, that is known to not produce any poisons and only sort of produces uh, good stuff. Um, the enzymes that you can use to then break down proteins and sugars. That's sort of the main two things that koji does. Um, but there's yeah, some fascinating new techniques they're using here in the West uh, with koji uh, because it's like, you know, all rules are off uh, and I think people are, as far as its culinary uses, so there's some cool stuff uh, being done. With, like you can make charcuterie out of vegetables, meats, carrots, and things like that, which I'm definitely interested in trying. But you look at this stuff, and it basically, you know, it's a it's a white filamentous mold. It's got a lot of uh, asper aspergillus, right, which is where koji comes from. Koji is uh, aspergillus oryzae, and uh, anyway. Uh, but as far as what we're getting with IMO, you know, it looks and sort of sometimes definitely smells like uh, uh, koji or aspergillus oryzae, but sometimes uh, it's got its own thing going on. It turns lots of different colors uh, when it spores out. There's red, black, of course, um, whereas koji typically spores to, what, green and sort of brown, maybe? Anyway, so uh, it's, you know, maybe there's what we're doing with this technique is uh, a similar sort of domestication of fungus, right? We don't know what the fungus is, and you know, I would, I think, encourage some agnosticism as to what is actually going on in that mix, just kind of to let it be. But if we know that there is um, a specific relationships that right roots make with uh, the fungal matter that they grow in. Uh, th what we're doing sort of by collecting IMO is increasing the amount of chances that this fungus can have to sort of connect with the roots of your plants and to, to get better established. Uh, you know, and this seems to work in you know, the cultivation of mushrooms as well you uh, employ similar techniques, although with that, you know, they're trying for more kind of a pure culture. But here, you know, we're, this is sort of land race fungus growing. And so one thing that's kind of interesting about this stuff is that it might be fun to sort of uh, swap IMO with people through the mail. Uh, I'm sure people are already doing that. But then again, you know, just let it all fight itself out in your garden. That seems to be the key to healthy plants. It's certainly something that seems to help the structure of the soil. And yeah, so mix this up with a little water and, or a lot of water. Uh, I, I forget what the ratio is. Again, I don't think it really matters too much. There's a certain, you know, good enough point for me where it doesn't seem, you don't want to overdo it, uh, but dilute it out in water. Uh, to the point that you do see it, I think make the water just a little bit murky. I would say that's the level you want to go for generally, a slightly murky water. Uh, and then let it soak into your soil. I guess the idea is you just want to replace it uh, 
uh, in your soil. Take that hyphae and the um, spores that you've grown and plant them out. Started to rain. So anyway, here we got two batches of, well, just one batch uh, divided into two containers. IMO. Uh, I forget, IMO2. I forget what the numbering system is in KNF. Maybe, yeah, I think this is IMO2. The first step is just catching it. So the raw, your raw fuzzy rice, that would be IMO1. Uh, and you can use that too. I've, I've used that just to kind of spread out into my soil. Put that directly. Uh, you can blend it. I think one time I used a blender. Uh, when I was first getting started here, I was like, I really want to do, you know, good by this soil. What's the, what's the best way to really get it in there? Uh, anyway, so you can blend it up and put it directly in or on your soil. And that's the thing about, yeah, the KNF system. You, uh, you then, you actually, you would, so you take this uh, diluted in water to sort of a murky level, and then you pour that over sort of various prepared compost type situations to get like this really fungusy uh, compost that you then, I think you can either store it or put it in your soil. And the way you store it, I mean, it is like a lot like koji if you wanted to store. I think the idea is that there's just like, it's all about these enzymes that it releases uh, into the soil that then allow, uh, like sort of unlock a lot of untold potential. Enzymes and just the fungus itself. So here it is. If you want to uh, borrow a little, I'd be happy to send you some. A little goes a long way. Uh, and you can propagate it out. You know, so even like a teaspoon of this, uh, if I was to send, you to send it to you, a mail, I think you would get uh, I mean, you could build out a lot of, you could build out a lot of IMO with that. Uh, I would imagine a whole trash bag, a whole trash can full maybe. Yeah, you could really get, you could build out a lot, maybe even more. And then you can build out more from that. At that point, you know, it's a lot like Koji, and then it's just like, you've got this thing, this fungus going, and you can build up from it. But this is the basic, this is the basic sort of storage unit. It does seem to keep for quite a while.